I was once told of a model at an art class. She was taking a break and walking around the room looking at the various sketches when she stopped in front of one easel. And she simply said, wow, I wish I could draw like that. And the artist said, you can, it just takes practice. Every day for 50 years. The artist was Gary Lee Gaston and he wasn't being smug or smart or arrogant. He was just telling the truth. In this episode, we take a closer look at Gary's life drawings, drawings, and sketches. In his excellent 2008 book, Drawing the Figure from Life, Gary simply states, practice, practice, practice. Over 25,000 life drawings, a testament to the fact that Gary follows his own advice. As a life member of the Royal Society of Arts in South Australia and the Adelaide Art Society, Gary has averaged around 60 life drawings a week for the last 40 years. These are done using many different mediums. Pencil. Pastel. Chalk, Conte or red chalk, even texture. Gary's favourite technique, however, is to use watercolour to establish the initial shape and form and then finish the picture with a pencil outline. This one shows the initial watercolour before the pencil is added. Early in his career, Gary might complete 10 sketches in an evening. Now, with experience, he tends to work a lot faster. He likes to capture the feeling or mood of a pose and the essence of a person. It's all done within a matter of minutes. Of course, Gary is often asked, sometimes with a hint of concern, why so many nudes? As we'll see, that's not all he does. But the answer is as far from salaciousness as it's possible to get. Gary sees the human body as the ultimate creation, a subject of endless fascination, a subject worthy of reverence to be uplifted and glorified, not objectified. And what do you do when a model is fidgeting or distracted or clearly wants to be somewhere else? Will you turn to the other artists for inspiration? Drawing someone who is unaware of being drawn puts them in their relaxed and natural state and makes for a good study. Of course, Gary learnt this from his mentors. This portrait was done by Gary's first great teacher, John Goodchild. I remember that 70s Terry Towling hat well. And this one was done by another of Gary's great mentors, John Dowie. Gary learned much about the art of sculpture from Dowie, who sculpted this bronze bust of Gary in the early 80s. Gary sculpted this figure in 1991 when he was at the Henry Moore Studio in London on a travelling scholarship. It was the study of sculpture that led Gary to radically change his whole approach to drawing. 
he now identifies the primary shape or silhouette first, and from there, he can break it down into the finest detail. As Gary says in his book, the well-drawn shape is where the real essence of the likeness resides. As mentioned, Gary's drawing expertise extends well beyond just life drawing. Here are some of his excellent portrait sketches. And here are some of his sketches of local landscapes and architecture. Gary has made thousands of studies of all creatures great and small. I think his horses are right up there with the best. As well as having his own book published, Gary has contributed illustrations to several others, including Clydesdale and Working Horses by Denise Angus and Heidelberg School, both published by Axiom Publishing. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I still have so much of Gary's art that I want to share with you. In the next episode, we look at my favourite topic, that is Gary's abstract and adventure pieces. They often go along with the many poems that he's written. So please share this video with as many people as you possibly can. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. And remember that simple advice. Don't wish. Practice.